In this video I will show you everything you need to know about Array in Hardops. Hi guys, Ryu here with another tooth for Blender hard surface modeling with Hardops and today I'm gonna talk to you about Array, which is a really cool little tool. So let's get started. There are three different ways of creating arrays in Hardops. One of them is a top menu, so if I create a cube, right, you can see that um, I have a menu up here. And the last four icons are arrays, so that's X, Y, and Z, right? Okay. Now, the last one is a circular array. So if I move this a bit to this side and control click this gizmo, I mean this icon, you will see that I'm going to get a circular array around the cursor. And you can also see again, as with any option in Hardobs, if you hover your mouse over a menu, you will get more options, right? Now, if I press and hold control, you can see these dots. And these dots are simply, uh, let me just increase the size of, uh, uh, of these icons so you can actually see very good. There we go. So you can see these are different um, types of modifiers. And if I open my modifier stack by pressing control tilde, I can see all these four arrays in here, right? Now, I can adjust them by sort of, you know, moving my mouse, okay? So I'm holding control, I'm clicking, and I'm simply moving, uh, moving my mouse. And I could also right-click on the dot to bring the respective menu of given array. So right-click. If you move your mouse away, by the way, the window is going to disappear. So stay within the window. And then I can adjust, you know, number of uh, items in that array. Another way of accessing array would be by going to Q menu and control clicking on array. And then if I move my, uh, I click on a gizmo and move my mouse, all the plus and minus, I can just adjust this array the way I want. It's a bit more controlled way of working with arrays, okay? The same array can be accessed by uh, going to operations and here you can click on this. This is exactly the same thing, right? So if I will not apply this array, oh, let's apply it for the sake of tutorial. Then I go to operations and click on array. I'm going to have a new array, you see? So that's how it works, all right? So you can also get arrays from uh, the mesh tool menu, right? But these are exactly the same as the ones that you already have in um, in Q menu or here on the top, because you see this array here, the uh, regular array is the same one as this one, right? And the ST3 array, right? This one is exactly the same as this one. So I don't see a point of anyone going in here when you can access this stuff in here. It just makes no sense to me, but it's there if you need it. Let's talk about ST3 array because that thing is amazing. So if I um, click on it, right, I'm going to have something like this, okay? So first of all, you got three new menus, okay? This one is a modifier menu, which tells you how many modifiers is on this cube. So, for example, if I edit bevel to this, right, you see bevel is added. Now, if I press ST3, I'm going to have two modifiers active. The menu on the right side, it's toggled by H, and it shows you all the functions that you can access. Now, this menu following the cursor, you can flip it by tapping tilde, and it's like a sort of quick access menu. Now, on the main screen, what's happening is that we have an array of one on X axis, which is indicated by this red circle. If I hold control and tap X, it will flip to Y, tap X, it will flip to Z, tap X, it will flip to X, and it's gonna cycle. Now, if I release the control button, right, and then just press X, it will switch to Z, however, if I hold control to move this cube, it's going to move upwards, you see. So it's not actually arraying on Z, but it's arraying on X and offsetting on Z, right? So this is kind of similar to, to this array here. Do you remember this gizmo? I was moving on one axis and then on another. So that's how it works. Now, two, uh, in order to reset this, right? You need to hold control and tap X twice and it's gonna reset it back to to the array being sort of you know and on um, in line with with the axis all right 
Now with mouse button, the scroll wheel, I mean, you can adjust the amount of items in the array. So you just simply scroll up or scroll down. Okay. So that's the basics of this array. And if you ever get out of it, you know, sort of click on a on on grid or whatever and the gizmo disappears, this this circle, just go to Q and refresh it and you're back in the array, right? So now let's talk about some interesting stuff that we can do in here. Now you can create a second array, so similar to what we could do here, by simply pressing A. So if I tap A and, you know, depending on which axis I'm on, so hold control, change the, the axis, right? And then if I click on A, and then I can change axis of this array as well. So now I've got two arrays going, uh, four arrays going on, right? So you can multiply them as many times as you want, right? All you need to do is just keep tapping A. Okay, let's delete this. If you, for example, wanted a circular array, then you just press B, right? And then you move your mouse and start scrolling your wheel and you got a circular array. Now, the cool thing about this one is that if you just hold control and tap X, it will start shifting on axis with ease. If you press N on the keyboard, you're going to get 360 stuff. So it's a twist 360 with that cube, right? And it works exactly the same way. Hold control and tap X to flip on axis. Move your mouse scroll to add or remove segments. And move your mouse left and right with holding or well, holding control to just you know change the uh, uh, the size of it. Okay. Now if I go back to the B, uh, I'm gonna get rid of the array, right? However, if I go back to N and from N I'm gonna move to V, now you see the menu shifted because in this N menu I have no option to multiply the arrays, so I have to move back to V and then tap A. And then hold control and tap my X to switch the axis. So now I can start multiplying these on whichever axis I want. But there is more. Check this out. So let's create a new array. Okay. The next one is my favorite. I swear to God, this is so good. So let's 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 create a big cube in here. Okay. And let's create a smaller one in here. Actually, let's make it really, whoa, that's too big. Let's make it really big. There we go. Now, I'm going to press Q and ST3, make maybe this many segments and press B, and now I have circle. Now, if I hold Control and Shift, I can actually move my mouse and snap this array to any face of any object. Now, if it doesn't align properly for you, all you need to do is release Shift and tap X once or twice until it aligns to a proper axis then you can resize it as well and then hold shift you will lock it and snap snapping it but it gets better what if you wanted to for example snap it to the middle of the face right well all you do is simply move cursor to the face and by the way i'm using pi menus for this from machine tools which is a fantastic add-on i highly recommend it and so I move the cursor to the middle of the face and now I press on this array, right? Go to ST3 array and tap S. If you tap S, it will snap to the middle, I mean, to the cursor. So cursor will, will be the, um, um, the central point of this array. And now you can hold control and you can start adjusting your array, okay? And you can still go to stuff like N and start flipping it and, you know, creating things like this, okay? But let's say we wanted to boolean this to this face, which probably is something we would want to do. So if I select the object in the cube and press on Q and difference, you see that we have a slight problem. And to understand what's going on, you need to understand how this array has been constructed. So let's go back and let's copy this array to, um, to the side, okay, for a moment. So if I wanted to apply everything right and simplify this mesh to basically having no modifiers, you will notice that if I go to X-ray mode, uh, you will notice that I'm going to have additional faces in here. And in fact, not just faces, but this geo is ripped. Okay, so it's sort of not merged together. 
Now, in order to fix this in, in the array state without actually applying all the modifiers, right, would be first of all to remove the faces from this cube faces, right? That's the first step. The second step would be to add weld modifier. So I'm going to go to modifier and weld. And now if I'm going to um, boolean this um, in this cube, right, everything is peachy. You see, everything was applied correctly. The best thing about it is that this is still a live array, so I can go back to st3 and start changing the array. So it's a live array boolean on another object. I mean, that's just great. I, I cannot get enough of it. It's so good. See, because now if I go to this cutter, right, I can actually start editing this cube. So let's say I could do something like this. And it will get updated. So see, that's that's very interesting to be able to create stuff like this. And this is still, you know, you can you're still able to edit this, right? Because if I if I open this cut and this cutter and go to my array, right, I can still keep modifying this further, right? So you know, it's just endless what you can do with this thing. And imagine this is just a single cut. So extremely powerful tool, um, this new array, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be uh, developing it further. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you understand Hardops arrays a bit more now. And, um, you know, you will go ahead and experiment with them because they're a lot of fun. If you enjoyed the vid, just drop us a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be uh, publishing a lot of videos regarding hard surface modeling, mostly sci-fi because that's what I'm into. It's going to be modeling and modeling tutorials as well. Add-on tutorials, workflow tutorials, tips and tricks and all that stuff. Also, in addition, I'm, I'm very into rendering, as in I, I just enjoy rendering and lighting my scenes. And uh, um, I have a lot of experience with this. I've been working as a professional photographer for seven years. So um, I look forward to creating some toots on how to render and how to light scenes in, in Blender to make the renders look really amazing. And, you know, cycles, if it doesn't matter. Um, so expect tutorials on this one coming up as well. So, you know, if you into that kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe and I appreciate it. Give us some comments if you would like to have some specific content to be explained. You know, I look into it and if I can do this, uh, um, for sure I'm um, I'm more than happy to, to do so. Well, again, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.